The Eagles don't have a lot of name recognition in their safety room, at least outside of Philadelphia, but that doesn't necessarily mean the position is gonna be a weakness. Sidney Brown was one of the most exciting safeties in this draft class, and Reed Blankenship had a very promising rookie year as a UDFA. He only played 350 snaps, so we're evaluating a relatively small sample size, but out of 93 qualifying safeties, he ranked in the top 30 in every available statistic, and he ranked first in the NFL in forced and completion rate and run stop percentage. Now, volume and efficiency have an inverse relationship. If he's a full-time starter next season, I don't expect his numbers to be as good, but from everything we've seen, there's reason to be optimistic. Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Reed Blankenship was a five-year starter at Middle Tennessee State, and watching him play, you can tell he's a confident and experienced player who knows where he's supposed to be on the field. He got an interception in his first career start against Green Bay. The Packers lined up in a balanced two-by-two -two formation, and the Eagles are in quarters coverage, but they motion Alan Lazard, changing the passing strengths to the right, so Blankenship switches to the weak side and reads the number three receiver. It seems like Rodgers was expecting Blankenship to drop into the deep middle, but he poaches the route from the backside and gets the interception. And you can see he's a solid athlete with good acceleration out of his drop to break on throws over the middle. That 94th percentile 10 yard split definitely shows up on tape. Against a quarters heavy defense like Philadelphia, offenses would try to use motion to load the formation to one side and create a numbers advantage. But Reed Blankenship is so good as the backside safety picking up those extra routes. So right here, the Eagles are in quarters and they have a plus one coverage advantage on both sides. They got three on two to the boundary and four on three to the field, but the Giants motion the back to create a four by one, and this forces the Eagles to adjust their coverage. If they were in man, they would just have a defender follow the back across the formation, but it's really easy to get out leveraged in that situation. In quarters, they make what's called a push alert, which basically slides everyone's coverage assignments one spot over to account for the extra receiver on the strong side. Without the motion, TJ Edwards would wall and carry this deep over, but now now he passes it off to Reed Blankenship as the backside safety. He still gets some depth so that he can stay on top of the deep post, but once he sees the horizontal break, he flips his hips and takes a perfect angle to break up the pass. And then another good example of poach technique here, Tennessee's in three by one, and you can't just play vanilla quarters against trips. Having Blankenship as the backside safety just bracket the number one is kind of wasting a coverage player, and you don't have an answer for the number three coming across the formation. So poach technique is when the backside safety helps on the vertical route from the number three receiver, and Blankenship's ability to quickly diagnose route concepts makes him really effective in this role. And whether it was split safety or single high, Blankenship was so solid with his coverage assignments. He was only targeted 13 times, so not a ton of opportunities to make plays on the ball, but he was almost always in the right spot, picking up the correct route, and he forced a lot of check downs and gave the pass rush more time to get home. Right here, the Cowboys are running a double pass. They toss it to Gavante Turpin, who throws it back to the quarterback, and he recognizes the play almost immediately. He takes takes a couple steps to flow with the run, but then he quickly recovers and positions himself over the top of Michael Gallup. If he took one or two more steps towards the play fake, there's a good chance he'd be out leveraged and Dallas would have gotten a touchdown, but he's able to cap the route and Dak Prescott has to take a sack. There were really just one or two coverage miscues last season, and I want to talk about this first one against Dallas because PFF and Sports Info Solutions put this on Blankenship, but I really don't think this was his fault. So the Eagles are in split safety, rotating into cover three buzz with the weak safety playing the middle hook and Blankenship dropping to the post. And in Gannon's defense, I think this would actually be called nine buzz. If the strong safety rotates down, it's three. And if it's the weak safety, a lot of people call that cover nine. But regardless, Blankenship has to protect the post. At first, CeeDee Lamb pushes vertically towards center field, but no one picks him up, so he just converts this to a deep corner and has a ton of wide open space. To me, this is a miscommunication between one of these three players. Maybe TJ Edwards was supposed to carry the vertical route from CeeDee Lamb, which isn't ideal, but my guess is that Darius Slay should be dropping into the deep third, and then you'd have a bracket on CeeDee Lamb, and Dak would have to work over to the backside dig, but I'm not really sure how this touchdown is Blankenship's fault. So if you remove that play, there was really only one other time he got beat. This play against New York, they've got a two-man bunch and Richie James is threatening this outside switch release wrapping around on a wheel route. Ideally, they would banjo this, meaning Bradbury takes the outside most route and Blankenship picks up the route inside, but it doesn't seem like they had that called. So assuming Blankenship is locked onto James, he has to widen out enough to pick this up if he runs a wheel, because if he hangs inside and James wraps around, there's a natural screen he'd have to work through. So he's kind of forced into 
outside leverage here and when James breaks inside, he can't stick with the route and he misses the tackle. And then he also kind of underestimated Christian Watson's speed here and took a bad angle on this touchdown. But those were really the two negative plays I charted from last year on 217 coverage snaps. And then you've also got to mention his run defense. He's just a missile crashing downhill and fitting the run. And the instincts and play recognition he has in coverage show up in both phases. Right here, the 49ers run a toss reverse to Debo Samuel. Blankenship identifies the play from the deep post and makes a straight line to the ball carrier. And then he forces a fumble and gets the recovery. He did make a lot of shoestring tackles, which look nice, but might not be sustainable. I mean, the scouting report for Blankenship this year is gonna be that he'll leave his feet on tackle attempts and he doesn't have the length or reach to extend his range. So don't be surprised if you see him get hurdled a couple times this year. But overall, Blankenship has really clean tape. He makes high impact plays every time he's on the field. So safety two is a question, but I think you can trust Blankenship to at least be a solid player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.